Good evening and welcome to the ITV News in London. Tonight's main stories. A woman's been found guilty of stabbing a grandmother to death as she made her way to work. Nicola Edgington attacked Sally Hodkin with a butcher's knife in a random and brutal attack in Bexley Heath in October 2011. Edgington had taken herself to hospital that morning but later left and went on to kill, as Ron K. Phillips now reports. A pensioner from Hornchurch is taking legal action against a hospital trust after she says she was ignored by medical staff. The patient is one of nine people planning to take Queen's Hospital in Rumford to court. Today's development follows a scathing report into NHS care in Mid Staffordshire. Maria Chatterjee has the story. A single mother with four children from Haringey is planning to appeal after she lost a high court case about changes to council tax benefits. The woman, who cannot be named for legal reasons, claimed that Haringey Council had not consulted properly on the changes, which mean thousands of people in the borough could lose money. Well, council tax changes will come into effect in April. If you're unsure of what that will mean for you and would like more of an explainer, check out icv.com slash London. The Deputy Prime Minister was ambushed during a radio phone-in today by the Mayor of London. Hi Nick, it's Boris, is how Mr Johnson began his message to Mr Clegg. He went on to challenge the Liberal Democrat MP over politicians' use of limos. Mr. The Mayor wants Mr Clegg to encourage his colleagues to use London's transport network instead. Our political correspondent Simon Harris has the full story. And to hear Nick Clegg's full response to Boris Johnson during that phoning, go to icv.com slash London. An S16 agent has spoken out about the dangers of methadrone, the drug that's also known as meow meow or meth. It was sold legally as plant food up until 2010, but was then made illegal when more than a dozen people died after taking the drug. As part of the ITV Fixers project, where young people tell their stories, one user is recalling her experience. A warning, there's some graphic detail related to drug use in this report. And if you want more information about the issues in that report or the Fixers project, go to fixers.org.uk. We are watching the ITV News in London still to come. But first, the mayor may have given a grilling to Nick Clegg earlier, but he gave an Olympic cycling champion an easier ride. Boris Johnson met up with gold medalist Laura Trott to unveil a route for a cycling festival this summer. Thousands of people are expected to get on their bikes for the Ride London event in August. Well, Bales has more. Next, the die-hard film franchise that just won't die. Bruce Willis is back with a fifth instalment of the popular action movie series. This time round, John McClane travels to Russia. Well, it's the premiere this evening in Leicester Square of A Good Day to Die Hard. Now, reporter Crezia Millerini is there. Lou? onto something that actually is romantic, to a production that doesn't have cars blowing up and doesn't contain any guns or shooting. Great Expectations is slightly milder. The Charles Dickens book has been made into films and TV series and is now coming to the West End stage. Joined by Lucinda Dickens Hawkley. Joining us. Lucinda, first of all, you look absolutely gorgeous. Oh, it's not you. something you wear every day. <laughs> no, I do feel a bit overdressed. <laughs> of course, it's, it's the gala <laughs> premiere tonight in yes, London, isn't right. it? Yeah. Um, and why did you decide to, well, both of you, why did you decide to, to bring this particular book to the stage? Is it hard or easy to bring something to the stage that's previously already been um, in films mm. and has already been on TV? That's why the gala premiere is tonight. But it's amazing. Production. Oh yes, absolutely wonderful. <laughs> I, have, I have seen it before because um, it's, it's been travelling around the country and yeah. I've been giving... me going en masse tonight to um, go to the gala. Actually, no, there's lots of different things happening on Dickens. Is there anything special that you've, uh, you've put into to this particular production? Oh, 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 oh lots of special things. You know, cauliflower and tiny little spindly... Especially having someone like Lucinda <laughs> in the wing. Much more <laughs> I'm I'm really... Both have a wonderful evening Thank at the you. gala Thank tonight. You, OK, it's time to see what's ahead on the ICV News. Here's Mark Austin. And Martin's here with the weather and some good news for those that were at risk of flooding. Well, yeah, it was only last week we were marking 60 years since the Canby Island flood. And, I mean, the important thing there is you're not talking years, you've got to... Finally tonight, above ground, there's no shortage of galleries in London. Well, now we'll be able to see art when we get on the tube as well. Well, joining me now is Tasman Dillon. Thank you very much for, for joining us this evening. What was the thinking behind this project? 
Well, we it's quite similar. I think we can see some pictures of it now. And it's, yeah. uh, you know, art on the underground has been going for 13 years. I think a lot of people don't really realise just how frequently art is popping up but on the underground. I think you brought these in for us, um, like tube map covers, which I'm sure quite a few people have seen. I think we can see that on, on the camera. Just have, have, have done them. Um, but So there's so many things that are happening art-wise. What more can we look forward to this year? I mean, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you, well, if you want to take a look at more of those pieces that may crop up at a tube station near you, go to icefreecom slash London. But that's all from the London team for now. We're back with the latest after ITV News at 10. Now, though, it's time to join Mark Austin and Julie Etchingham for the national and international news.